Well, in this new playlist, I want to explain about 20 important articles about question answering. And I start from very elementary ideas, very basic ideas, very uh, ideas based on knowledge graphs, because sometimes you have knowledge graphs and sometimes you don't have knowledge graphs. You have just a bunch of text. And uh, so at the end of my lectures, I will talk about open domain question answering as well. Sometimes um, the, the reason for question answering is because of reading comprehension. Your chatbot needs to read several books and texts and see what are the sentiment, what are the story about, what, what are the text or document or report is about. And so we start with uh, knowledge graphs, question answering that have that are related to knowledge graphs then uh, I, I I will talk about more complex questions like multi hop multi hop question answering uh, but there are still closed domain and closed domain I mean we have just a single sentence or a paragraph not nothing more but then you will have open domain uh, question answering that you have several texts and first of all you should retrieve which text is important and then you resolve that text in order to answer the question and uh, 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 so sometimes we don't have knowledge gap sometimes we have text only and sometimes we have both of them so we have both knowledge graph and text so for each of these, we have different set of models, but hopefully I will create a general framework so that all of them uh, could be consistent and could agree with each other. So, com so it is important for conversational AI uh, and question answering is really important also for conversational AI and conversational search and so in conversational AI chatbot, you have a dialogue intent and you want to see the response if someone, an employee, asks you a question. And you see the classical chatbot is just you, you answer that from the database query. But nowadays we use conversational AI, nowadays we use it, we use knowledge graph. Of course, it could have different mechanism it does it may not have a knowledge graph but here in this lecture we assume we are we have a knowledge graph and the reason that this conversational ai thing is really interesting is because it's intersection of three great areas of research one of them is uh, research in reinforcement learning the other one is uh, research in NLP and then knowledge graph. So today I want to talk about uh, how you can use the operator. We create some operators called projection, intersection, and also union. That if you know these, you can answer a question using these operators. And so a great company is Razor.com for banks. A great data set for if you want to work on knowledge graphs, so you, start, you should start from free base and start from very elementary, uh, very small data set like 15K. And it has, as you see, free base 15K is one of the data set has 14,000 real entities. And and one thousand around one thousand relations, which is good. So it has header, relation, and a target. So from header, you go to the target with some relation. For example, uh, for example. Farshad, born in, born in is a relation and the target is Tehran. So a quick recap from trans E is that uh, you have this, you want to minimize this. This is margin-based ranking criterion over training sets. 
and uh, you have you should watch that uh, video in my playlist and so for query embedding we can say that it is header plus the relation so when the answer t you have an answer you want the query embedding to be very close to the, your answer For example, here is an example. So we want to generalize the idea of complex queries. So this is a, a, a path query. So for, for, from relation one, you go to another node, another entity. From relation two, you go to another entity. And finally, this is the query that you have embedded. So your query is starting from node and you add some relations to that. And we want this to be the answer. I mean, the final thing, we want this to be answer. So for example, Obama is national, national is American and or or for example Turing Award Pearl Jadel Pearl won the Turing Award so win is the relation and so a great researcher is is Yuri Leskovec that introduced this interesting article that I want to explain. So you just need some operators, for example intersection operator that takes two boxes and produce intersection of them. And the other thing is projection operated. You take the current boxes input and use the relation embedding to project and expand the box. So center and offset are now translated because we want to know uh, what are the possible possible areas that you could go from this relationship, this relation R. So the queries could be one hop queries, for example, where did Hinton graduate, or it could be path queries, where did Turing Award winners graduate. So it's like this. And conjunctive, it could be conjunctive. For example, it could be like this. A conjunctive that you have uh, Turing Award Pearl and then for example like this that you need an intersection for example where did Canadian with Turing Award graduate so you need the intersection operator because first you should project Turing Award and you know what are the nodes and and then you, you calculate the intersection of that like this, that this is intersection of Turing Award one. So, uh, so we should know how much attention should be given to Hinton, how much attention should be given to Bengio, and it depends on the distribution. And we want to design a neural intersection operator because we have input queries and we can learn this. And what is the drug that causes short of breath and treats disease associated with protein ESR2? This is an example of projection operator. So the idea is very intuitive. We are just uh, using these operators in order to answer the question. So another example is uh, what is the drug that causes short of breath? Causes short of breath. So these are, here is a set of answers. And treats disease associated with protein. And some disease associated with protein. So intersection of them is, is the answer. And we are learning. We just need to learn this box. And what is important about this box? The, the center, if you know the center and the offset, and this is the offset, then, then you know this box. So they know all of these locations in this box. 
So if you just learn this, then you can know how you can embed those queries and find it and hopefully answer the question. So data is noisy. Here node V is answered to query Q. Node V is answered to query Q. And here Q max is center plus offset. So can we embed complex queries? Sometimes you need more than something projection and intersection. That's why we created the union operator. So for example, what drug can treat breast cancer or lung cancer? So this reminds us that we should use this or reminds us that we should use the union operator. And so we have this original computational graph, but we convert it to something that is meaningful for us. Although we are adding some projections, this one and this one, but we are adding something, but no problem. We, at least we have understood the problem. But so now union is appeared, appears at the end. And first we embed all and aggregate at the last step. So we aggregate at the last step. So we are increasing uh, the dimensionality. We cannot design a box embedding for question two or question four that only uh, V2 and V4 are in the box. So the conclusion is that given M conjunctive queries with non-overlapping answers, we need dimensionality of this. So we should increase, we should go to higher dimensions in order to handle this query, handle these or, uh, or queries. And this slide is from uh, that professor in Stanford, that we first transform to equivalent form, and then we embed it to QM and Q2, Q3 till QM, we embed all of them. And then we calculate the box distance, QI and V, and we take the minimum of all distances and finally, the score. So we want non-answers to be out of the box and answers to be inside the box. Here K is the negative entities. This is the trick, this loss is a trick that we use in machine learning quite a lot. But the problem is these parameters that we should know, and so it's parametric. So we randomly sample a query from training graph, an answer and a negative sample, and embed the query. Then we calculate the score of V and V prime. Then we optimize the loss to maximize that function while minimizing fq of the opposite. So this is the, uh, this is the non-answer, we want to minimize it. And what this is the answer, so we, we want to uh, encourage it, we want to maximize it for the answer. 